My, my, my. You say, can children really understand? Yes, children can understand. The Bible says, out of the uh, mouths of babes and suckling, thou hast ordained strength. In New Testament, Jesus he used the word praise. My friend, oh, can I just encourage our young people, get a heart for God. Moms and dads, let's, let's raise children that know God and love God and have a passion for God. Well, join me, if you will, in the book of Proverbs this morning. Proverbs in chapter 4. Proverbs in chapter 4. Usually we just read one verse for our morning scripture, but two verses this morning, Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Uh, the message this morning, of course, Father's Day, and the message this morning is good advice from a wise father. I'll just make a caveat, that's not me. <laughs> We're going to go to the scriptures today and get some good advice from a wise father. If you'll join me this morning, if we'll stand this morning out of respect and reverence to God's Word, we're going to read verse 1 and verse 2. You follow along as I read Proverbs in chapter 4 and verses 1 and 2. I'm privileged, I'm honored this morning to preach my Father's Day message out of my grandfather's Bible. Uh, my grandpa, uh, Harold Dungey, meant the world to me. He was my mom's father. And if there was a man uh, who played a significant role uh, as a mentor, a godly man, a stabilizing influence, it was my grandpa, Dungey, and I'm honored and privileged today to preach from his Bible this morning. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 1, Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. Now, why? Why would Solomon say, hey, listen, kids, pay attention. Look at verse 2. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. Let's pause and pray. Father, we come before you today, and Father, we want to say thank you. Thank you for our fathers, Lord, thank you for our earthly fathers, Lord, who's given, a, given us life. And Father, I pray and ask your Lord today that we would be grateful. Lord, whether we enjoy a good relationship, a distant relationship, or no relationship with our earthly father, God, I pray and ask your Lord that we would love them and pray for them and do all that we can to bless them. For Lord, it is right. It's pleasing in your sight. But Father, we thank you, Lord, that God greater than any earthly father or grandfather, we have a heavenly father. And God, you are a good father, and you're a wise father. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're a father to the fatherless. And I thank you, O oh God, for the blessing that that is. Father, we pray as we would meet together today <clears throat> on this Father's Day, Lord, I pray that you would challenge us, you would meet with us. God, I pray that you would hurt, uh, uh, help us and stir us today. I pray, O oh God, as men, dear Lord, that we would listen to this message. I pray, O oh God, as men, dear Lord, that we would take counsel from this message. I pray, O oh God, today that you would help us to be better men for you. And Lord, we thank you for this in Jesus' name and amen. Thank you. you may be seated this morning. We have recorded in the scriptures uh, some good advice from a wise father. Of course, that was Solomon. King Solomon wrote most of the Proverbs. hope that you'll join us on Wednesday nights. We're going through a series, Principles in Proverbs. We have several messages left in that series. Uh, but on Wednesday nights, what we're doing, we've learned from, uh, that a proverb is a short saying with a long meaning. All right, and there's so many wonderful truths that God has given us. It's a wonderful study. Now, one of the curiosities, for those of us who are students of the Scriptures, people that love to get in the Bible, one of the curious things that is a mystery. How many of you guys like mysteries? Like mysteries? You're intrigued by mysteries. There's a, kind of a, a mystery about this uh, that Solomon, we know this from the Bible, Solomon had a thousand wives. So I don't know whether he was wise or stupid. I'm not sure. But anyway, that's for another discussion and another message. But Solomon had a thousand wives, so it would stand to reason that he would have a lot of kids. David had just a few wives, and he had a number of kids. And, and these, you say, why was that? It was, you know, there are times in the, you say, why did they do that in the Bible? Well, just like today. Now, today, do you do everything God expects you to do, yes or no? No, we don't do everything. Do we do things that God says, hey, that's probably not the best thing for you to do? Probably we do that. That's exactly what happened in the Bible. God never endorsed polygamy. God never endorsed the, uh, the multiplying of wives. But people then, just like people now, did things they shouldn't have done, and they uh, didn't do things they should have done. But Solomon uh, did take a number of wives, so it stands to reason he would have had a boatload of children. But it's interesting, in the Scriptures... Only one of Solomon's children is mentioned by name, and that is his son Rehoboam. 
Later in the scriptures, it talks about at least three of his daughters. It talks about their marriages. So we have record of only four children from all of these marriages. And so it'll be one of those mysteries when we get to heaven and say, how many children did that man have? He had to have a lot of them. Now, kind of getting back on track here this morning, going back a little bit, Solomon had a father. You always know, that. who was that? That was King David. King David was Solomon's father. And King David poured into his son. He said, son, you're going to be the king. Son, you're going to have a lot of stuff. But son, you need wisdom. He got a hold of his young son. He looked him right in the eye and said, son, you need to seek wisdom from God. And boy, that made an impression upon Solomon's heart. You guys might remember the story when Solomon becomes king. God meets with Solomon. And God says, Solomon, son, what do you want? I'll give you anything you want. And Solomon remembered that charge. Solomon remembered that encouragement. Solomon remembered the sternness and the earnestness, the, the desire of his father. And he said, God, I need wisdom. My father told me I need wisdom. God, I don't ask for anything else but wisdom. And the Bible says God did give him wisdom. Wisdom beyond anything that we can even imagine. Now, what do you say? What is wisdom? Wisdom is understanding what to do and when to do it. That's wisdom. Wisdom is understanding the what of a thing and the why of a thing. You know, many times we do things, we know what to do. That's knowledge. I know what to do. But sometimes we don't have wisdom. Why am I doing that? Can I say challenge yourself? Why do you do what you do? Why, why do you do what you do? You may be doing, you're doing a lot of stuff. You're doing it every day. How many of you are busier now than you've ever been in your life? That's me. Can I say, we're doing a lot of things. There's a lot of what. But my friend, we don't take time to have wisdom to say, why am I doing what I'm doing? And God did give Solomon wisdom. So what we have in the Bible here is wisdom, not just from an earthly father, <clears throat> which is what we do, but we have wisdom from the heavenly father, and we have a lot of it. Go back with me. Hold your place here in Proverbs chapter 4. I want to point something out. Maybe you've never noticed this. We're right in Proverbs. Notice the first two words of Proverbs chapter 2. What are those two words? Read them with me. My son. You see that? My son. Look at Proverbs chapter 3. Look at the first two words of Proverbs chapter 3. Read them with me. My son. Look at Proverbs chapter 4. It says, hear ye children. Look at chapter 5. What's the first two words there? My son. Look at chapter 6. What are the first two words there? My son. Look at chapter 7 in verse 1. What's the first two words there? My son son. It's interesting. You, maybe you've never discovered that in your reading of the book of Proverbs, but from chapter 2 to chapter 7, this is Solomon pouring his wise, good advice from a wise father into his children. So let me just start out with this here. Fathers, this is an exhortation to fathers. This is an encouragement to all of you men that have children or maybe you men that have a God-given responsibility. Maybe you have a Sunday school class. Maybe you have a family. Uh, maybe you have some of those people that you watch over. Maybe you have a, a, a ministry. Maybe you have some influence in your life. Can I just say this? Fathers, be engaged. We need a revival in America of men who are engaged in the lives of their children. In chapter 2 through chapter 7 of the book of Proverbs, he says, my son, my son, my son, my son, my son. Then he says in chapter 4, my ye children. Can I say Solomon was engaged in his family. Solomon was paying attention to his children. Solomon was paying attention to his wife, his wives. Solomon was mindful of his family. He recognized that he had children that he had to raise. He was responsible for the welfare and the spiritual upbringing of his children. Can I say an exhortation, an encouragement to all of us men here? Let's be engaged. Uh, can I just say, I don't have it on me because I, I never bring it into the sanctuary, but men, let's not live on our cell phones. And I'm just, I'll raise my hand and say I'm the guilty is charged to say I spend way too much time distracted by, by the, uh, the, the passing fancy of social media and news feeds. My friends, we need to lay these things down. We need to be engaged with our wives, engaged with our children. Can I say this? Be engaged. Solomon just did not father his children. Listen, Solomon was a father to his children. Solomon did not just beget children. He didn't just father them. He was a father. 
He took time to speak to his children. He invested the wisdom that God gave to him. He turned it around and invested in them. Care about your children. Can I say care about my dads? Care about the present and the future of your family. May I say as us as men, I believe biblically speaking, it is our duty to provide for our families. But listen, it is our privilege to invest in them. It is our privilege to invest in them. And whether that is our wives, whether that is our nieces and nephews, whether that is a Sunday school class, whether that is some area of influence that you have, may I say, invest in others. And lastly, on, on this particular exhortation as we begin here tonight, this morning, can I say Solomon also, he learned from his mistakes. Can I say this, kids, especially teenagers here, uh, right now you, you guys are kind of evaluating your moms and dads, and you're like, well, what's up with my mom and dad? Listen, they're not perfect, and you're not either. Amen? And one of the things that you discover as you grow older is that your parents weren't perfect, and you weren't either. Listen, there's no perfect mom, and there's no perfect dad, and there's no perfect family, but listen to me, we can all learn from our mistakes. Solomon, as you read his writing, Solomon is pouring into his children in the book of Proverbs. He gets into, uh, and then we see the other end of his life. And Solomon, you can read in the Bible, God gives you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Listen to all the mistakes that Solomon made. And Solomon made plenty of mistakes. But Solomon, at the end of his life, in the book of Ecclesiastes, listen, he realizes his mistakes. He admits his mistakes. And he turns around and he helps another generation from the mistakes that he learned. As a father, can I just say that as a man, let's, can I, men, can I just encourage you today? Let's own it. Amen? Let's own that, that we're just flesh. Let's own the fact that we don't always say the right thing. We don't always do the right thing. We don't always respond the right way. We don't respond biblically or spiritually like Christ would have us to as a husband. You as a father, uh, you as a, uh, whatever influence God has given you, we don't always get it right. But listen, can I say this? Make it right. Where we've done wrong, let's be like Solomon. Let's learn our mistakes. Let's admit it openly, publicly. He wrote it all down for us to, to, to learn from. And let's own it. And let's make it right. Now, let's get into our text this morning. Some good advice back in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse. That was just a little bit of an, uh, an introduction. Amen. I thought it would just warm us up this morning. I want to see, I want to show us this morning four truths, four pieces of good advice from a wise father. Now, I've dealt with dads and I've dealt with fathers. Now, kids, I'm going to deal with you. All right, dads are like, whew, finally, thank God, I'm off the hook for a minute here. Notice here in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 1, he says this, Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. Verse 2, For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. Truth number one, some good advice here this morning from a wise father, wise Solomon, giving advice from even a wiser heavenly father. Can I say to every child, every teenager, every boy, every girl, may I say every single one of us that have parents and those of us who have mentors and those who are poor in us, number one, some good advice, lean in. Notice what it says in verse one, hear ye children. You know what that means? It means young people, open your ears. You know what that means, guys? You have to take the earbuds out. You, you got to Put it, put it off and put it down. you got to shut the television off. When mom and dad are talking, listen. They've lived a little bit longer than you. They've experienced a little bit longer than you. They love you more than any one of their influence in your whole life. Listen, good advice from a wise father. Listen, what we should do, lean in. He says, listen, and then he says this, attend. That means not only open the flaps, but let it in. He says, attend to know. Can I say to this to all of us here this morning, to you ladies that are here and all of us here, whether you have children, don't have children, whether you're married or single, can I say this? Lean in to the wise advice of a very wise Heavenly Father. You know, one thing that I've learned that I've gotten older, I'm not old by any any stretch. You say, what's old? Ten years older than me. That's old, okay? It's a very sliding scale. So if those of you who are in your 80s, who's old? Those that are ten years older than you. I mean, those folks in their 90s, I mean, God bless them, they're old, all right? Now listen, we all have a heavenly Father, 
And that heavenly Father has given us some good truth. You know what we need to do? We need to lean in. We need to pay attention. We need to say, whoa, 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 whoa. What's being said here? Why is God saying that to me? Number one, we need to lean in. Second piece of very good advice we see in verse 2. The reason we ought to lean in, for I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. Second truth is this. We need to, second piece of advice is we need to discern the truth. We need to discern the truth. He says, for I give you good doctrine. You know what that means? That means there is the presence of good doctrine. Well, where there is good, there is also what? Fill it with me. There is bad. Amen. Please understand some good advice from a wise father is this, that you and I need to have a very discerning understanding. Can I say, young people, I'm just going to speak to you a little bit today as appropriate for the day. There are a lot of people who have a lot of bad advice for your life. And no one on God's given planet loves you more than your mother and your father. And it may not make sense. And can I say to all the rest of you, you may not understand. You may not know the why. But may I say you have a mother and father that loves you with all their heart. And they're trying to help you. Because there's some really bad advice out there. There's some wicked counsel out there. There's some, there's some, uh, 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 there, there are things that are being said and taught and, and published and propagated and sung, listen, that's right from the pit of hell. You say, Pastor, that's pretty strong. I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. Can I say I've had the misfortune of in my life of plugging my ears at some really good advice that I was given as a young man. And, I, and I, can I say, I paid very dearly for that, listening to bad advice, going down ungodly roads. Number two, a really good piece of advice is this, discern truth. Can I say to all of us here today, there has never been a time where you and I need to exercise discernment more than we do today. We are flooded, we are bombarded, we are inundated with sources and voices that all have an agenda And my friend, that agenda is not always God's glory or your good. Be very discerning. What you're listening to, can I say one of the most dangerous things you can do is just turn the television on and let it play. That's a dangerous thing to do. Every single verse, every single person, every single voice, every single influence, listen, they have an agenda. And it may not be God's glory or your good. We need to be very discerning. Number three, Number three, we also see from this very same verse in verse two, he says this at the very end. He says, forsake ye not my law. The third piece of good advice from a a wise father is this. Number one, lean in. Number two, discern the truth. Number three, decide to commit. It says, forsake ye not my law. Decide to commit. My friend, what will keep you in the right way? What will, you, what will keep you in God's way? What will keep me in the good way is the decision. Listen, my friend, I can't decide for you, and I can't decide for them, and I can't decide for them, but I can decide for me. And Solomon, as he's looking at his children, and he's teaching his children, he says, he says hearken ye children. He's talking plurally. Then he says, forsake ye. He gets down very particularly. Listen, I don't know what your brother's going to do. I don't know what your sister's going to do. I don't know what your mom's going to do. I don't know what your dad's going to do. But Joshua said it best. He says, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. We decide to commit. Listen, I, I, you say, what's going to keep, you look around, just look around, look around, everybody look around. And, and you think back two, three, four years ago, pre-COVID, I'm not talking about COVID, because COVID did, COVID just took pff, everything and turned it upside down. But listen, you and I could look around this room, and there used to be people sitting in this room who were no longer sitting in this room. And I'm not talking about the ones who have moved away, gone to college, those whose life has taken them in a different direction, those who God's moved to different places. I'm not talking about that. 
I'm talking about folks who used to beloved God, folks who used to believe the Bible, folks who used to participate in their body of believers, the local church. By the way, man said it. I read this in a book. Brother Tim and I are reading this book on uh, church leadership. He says, somewhere along the way, we've gotten this idea that church is a program that we consume instead of something vital like an organ that we depend on. I'd never heard it put that way, but it's been burning in my soul. Why have, why have I stayed in church? Because somewhere along the way, I realized that this was life-giving. It was like the air in my lungs. It was like the blood in my veins. It was like the nutrition in my system. It was something that the house of God and the people of God and the praise of God and the, uh, the Word of God, it was something that gave me life and nourishment and health and kept me close to God. And my friend, I can't live without it. This isn't just something I step in and step out of. It's not something I come and go from. Third piece of good advice. Listen. Commit your way to God. You have to make a decision that no matter what your friends do, no matter what your family does, by the way, in this day and age, no matter what your church does, where your church goes, listen, my friend, I'm not, uh, I'm not perfect. I'm not Jesus. I'm just a man. God help us. I could go screwball-y. My wife will kill me, and so you guys are in good, you, you guys are in good hands, okay? I, got the, I married a fighting fundamentalist, all right? Just keep me on the straight and narrow. And either I'm going to go straight or we're going to have my funeral, and that's the way I want it, all right? <laughs> Hallelujah. As they say in the South, hallelujah, all right? Hallelujah. Listen, far too many Christians are just following, and I say this with all due respect, their church and their pastor right off the cliff to apostasy. Don't you follow your pastor when he's leading you the wrong way. Don't you follow your church just because that's your church. Listen, my friend, you and I individually have to commit to God and His Word. That's a good piece of advice from a wise Heavenly Father. Lastly, lastly, we'll drop our attention down. By the way, in the intervening verses to where we're going in verse 20, he says, decide to commit because I give you good doctrine. Verses 7 through 13, he talks about the way of wisdom. I'll let you read about that later. He says, kids, listen, I'm asking you to commit to the way of wisdom. And then in verses 14 through 19, he says, and by the way, this is the, the contrast, the way of the wicked. In verses 14 through 19, in verses 20 through 22, he talks about the fruit of faithfulness. He said, listen, there is blessings and benefits for serving God. But lastly, in verses 20 through verse 27, he's giving some wise advice, good advice from a wise father. He says, kids, mind your members. You better mind yourself. Mom and dad maybe taught you to mind your manners. Look at verse 20. The Bible says this. It says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are the life unto those that find them. And look at that, the health to all their flesh. And then he describes that. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Number one, he says in verse 23, guard or keep your heart. Verse 24, he says this, put away from thee a froward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. He says, don't only guard your heart, he says, clean your mouth. Can I say one of the worst things that you can do, young men and older men, is to pick up the perverse habit of swearing. My friend, there is no place in God's people and no place in the mouth of God's children for profanity. He says, son, children, guard your heart and clean up your mouth. Verse 25, he says, let thine eyes look right on. Let thine eyelids look straight before thee. He says, guard your heart, clean your mouth. And number three, he says, focus your eyes. Listen, my friend, this day and age, we can be distracted by all the shiny little goo of the devil. The world, the flesh, and the devil have plenty of little shiny trinkies for all of us to look at. And Solomon says, hey, you're going to get distracted. You're going to start going the wrong direction. He says, focus your eyes. Verse 26, he talks about our mind. He says, ponder the path of thy feet. Let all thy ways be established. We need to ponder our path. That means we need to engage our mind. 
We need to think about where we are. We need to think about where we're going. And lastly, in verse 27, a verse of decision, turn not from the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Guide our feet. Listen, my friend, your decisions decide your direction. Your decision decides your direction. Where are you going? You made the decision to get there. My friend, someday you're going to end up at some place. You got in your car today and turned the car on and you ended up here. You didn't end up at Walmart. Ever just do that? You get in your car and you're going to Walmart just because we always go to Walmart. Uh, you get in your car and you're going in a certain direction and you're, you're, my wife would be like, where are you going? I'm going to Myers because we, we go this way. We're always going to Myers. All right. I'm just going. Listen, the, the destination that you're headed to is a decision that you're making. Solomon says, son, let me give you a piece of advice. Mind your members. Four pieces of good advice from a very wise Heavenly Father. Let's pray. Father, we come before you today. Thank you, Lord, for some very good advice. Thank you, God, that you challenge us as men. Lord, you challenge us as husbands. Lord, you challenge our fathers and our grandfathers to be engaged. And God, I pray for each and every one of us today, dear Lord, that we would be very attuned. I pray that each of us would decide to lean in to the ways of God. Lord, that we would exercise discernment in what we listen to and who we believe I pray, O oh God, that we would decide to commit ourselves to you and to your ways. And Lord, because of that commitment, I pray that it would result in minding our members. And God, our life would be different on the outside because of the decision and the commitment we make on the inside. Father, I pray that you would help us. Lord, I pray if there's one here today that is not saved, you're not their heavenly Father, then God, I pray, dear Lord, they would not leave this place without turning to you in their heart, opening their heart to you and asking you to become their heavenly Father, putting their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ to save their sin-sick soul. And Lord, I pray for all of us, Lord, who have been saved, we become a Christian, I pray, O oh God, that we would heed our good advice from a wise father. Lord, we need you this morning. I pray that you'd move in Jesus' name. And amen. We'll stand this morning, our heads bowed and our eyes closed. The altar is open as the musicians begin to play a verse of invitation. Men, can I say today... We